right. So, uh, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. And um, it is a privilege for Rahul and I to be here on the stage. First conferences have been pretty close to our heart. I've been attending first conferences on and off uh, for almost uh, 13, 14 years now. Um, and today we are excited to present on sec scoring security vulnerabilities in medical devices, talking about a rubric um, that was announced by the, the US Food and Drug Administration end of last year, uh, specifically talking about new scoring methodologies for vulnerabilities in healthcare and medical devices. And before we get started real quick, um, I'm the founder and CEO of Deep Armor, uh, previously worked for Intel, Palm and Sun Microsystems um, in a variety of security roles. Um, I also have with me Rahul, who is a security analyst with special focus on cloud and web application security. Deep Armor is a, a, a small boutique uh, security consulting firm based out of Bangalore, India. We work on vulnerability assessments, SDLC, pen testing, secure design consultations, and so on. All right, so let's dive right in. Uh, the agenda for today, we have uh, roughly about 26 minutes. Um, so we're gonna be talking a lot about healthcare and medical device security. That's the, the fundamental topic. We do a quick intro to CVSS, quick because this is first and CVSS, uh, well, the first is the home of CVSS. So we'll talk about what CVSS is, we'll talk about some of the challenges with CVSS and then uh, what the FDA has done uh, specifically uh, for healthcare and medical devices to enable more accurate and precise and justifiable scoring for vulnerabilities. We talk about customizations, what goes into the rubric, and uh, we also talk about how to use an online calculator. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, this is the only online calculator available at this point for this rubric uh, for medical devices. And um, uh, of course, uh, we don't want to just make it all theory. Uh, we have uh, at least one case study, depending on the time, uh, maybe two, but it's quite likely that it's going to be one case study where we compare scoring the security vulnerability with the rubric and with the CVSS and how things can change. And finally, we wrap it up talking about the next steps, some of the gaps and future work for this product. Healthcare and medical devices uh, have gone digital a lot more in the, in the recent past, especially in the last 10 to 15 years. And what has come as part of this uh, movement is that there have been new kinds of attacks, new kinds of vulnerabilities and exploits affecting these medical devices. So if you just look at the last two to three years, there have been many headlines similar to what you see on the screen. Most recently, less than a year ago, there were um, vulnerabilities discovered and reported in G healthcare radiological devices. There have been issues in Medtronic products. And there have been some very interesting um, presentations at security conferences as well. Uh, most notably on insulin pumps, on pacemaker hacks, and so on. So this is a problem that we can't afford to ignore anymore. Um, it's, it's no longer theoretical. It's no longer just on paper. But some of these attacks can have very severe impact, which means it's imperative that we have the right kind of platforms, we have the right kind of tools for doing not only the security assessments and secure design and, and evaluation, but also communicating effectively about vulnerabilities in medical devices. And when we talk about communicating about vulnerabilities, uh, CBSS kind of is the gold standard right now. Um, it's pretty much universal at this point. Um, almost every security analyst is aware of what CBSS is. Uh, the special interest group for CBSS is under the first umbrella. And um, broadly speaking, I expect most of the audience to know what CVSS is. Otherwise, please refer to the, uh, the first uh, URL that we have shown on the screen here. Essentially, CVSS has uh, three parts to it. One is called the base score, which is the simpler calculator that you see on the screen at the bottom. You also have the temporal and environmental score that allows you to uh, tweak uh, the knobs a little more to get a more accurate score depending on your environment depending on the exploit availability, depending on the fix availability and so on. The reason why I have uh, marked the uh, base score in, in green is that it's the most prevalent, it's the most used, it's the easiest. So that tends to be the option opted by most security teams. 
Currently, 3.1 is the latest version. I know there are many extensions and frameworks and work going on for the future revisions of CVSS. Um, quite simply put, CVSS gives you a score from zero to 10, 10 being critical, showstopper, uh, blocker, whatever you call it, zero being no risk, not a vulnerability or something that is not exploitable or doesn't warrant um, you know, the security response. There are certain challenges with CVSS. In fact, one of my former employers preferred not to use CVSS because it could lead to uh, uh, interpretation of scores in such a way that it does not reflect the actual vulnerability or the risk in the right way. But having said that, CVSS, as I said, is really universal, but with that universality comes certain problems, right? So it's designed to be one size fits all in a way. Uh, you see uh, uh, product manufacturers in the IoT space and the web application space, Linux kernel, network protocols, pretty much every sector where there is digitalization, digitization, use CVSS uh, for scoring vulnerabilities, not only in software, but also in hardware and firmware and pretty much all through the stack. And the other, uh, the, the other uh, kind of uh, an obstacle with, with CVSS is subjectivity. Because the definitions can be interpreted differently, uh, the answers can be very subjective. I may answer a certain question, let's say about uh, scope, which is often debated, or let's say uh, the attack complexity. What may be simple to me could be interpreted as really complicated for someone else. So this can lead to different scoring. And also the number of knobs may be limited. Um, if you see the, if you remember the screenshot, there were, there were eight of them, um, three of them for confidentiality, integrity, availability, and a bunch of them for attacker profile. And within each of those, there's either a none, low, or a high for most of them. So the number of options for each is still limited. And uh, temporal and environmental sections often lead to more work, often lead to more subjectivity, and, and essentially, um, um, they just fall through the cracks. Most security teams, security teams tend to use the base score. And this can lead to a lot of confusion and ambiguity in terms of, is it really representing the, the impact uh, of the vulnerability correctly? Is it representing the risk associated with the vulnerability correctly? All risks are not, secure, are, are, are not equal. Um, so this kind of subjectivity and one size fits all can be really problematic. Uh, you score a vulnerability for your, for your uh, Facebook app or for, for Instagram or a social media application, but then you're using the same yardstick, let's say, for a pacemaker. So um, there are concerns about whether this kind of scoring, this kind of rating a vulnerability is getting the right kind of attention in the medical community. In the medical community, uh, poor scoring or poor communication of information or lack of justification can have a severe impact because we are talking about um, prioritization and how the, uh, the engineering teams need to respond, how the executives need to respond, how the incident response team has to respond and so on. So any kind of ambig ambiguity can have a pretty severe impact. And also it becomes imperative that there are new parameters and new definitions that are um, mandatory in a way or that, that would, it would make a lot of sense to accommodate them. For example, clinical environment conditions, patient safety, and so on. For this purpose, um, in order to address some of these challenges and ambiguities, the US FDA worked with MITRE um, over, over the last couple of years and as of October, 2020, they announced the rubric for CVSS. So the rubric is essentially a, a healthcare medical device specific scorecard and a template that's lathered on top of the CVSS 3.0 spec. There have been multiple internal revisions and sponsor studies. So a lot of work has gone into this. And as an outcome, uh, we have the cybersecurity medical device development tool. The purpose of this is to generate accurate severity scores. We talked about how there could be ambiguities and shortcomings. So that's exactly what they want to address. The purpose is to score uh, accurately and justify the scores. So uh, as part of this, there are um, certain healthcare specific metrics uh, that have been clearly defined in the specifications. And this also includes patient safety, medical device design and clinical network environment. 
again, if you want to summarize the purpose of the MDDD, it is to generate accurate severity scores. So how does it work? Um, the FDA and MITRE effort does not reinvent the wheel. So we now have structured questions for CVSS based core metrics, but the C, I, and A, the confidentiality, integrity, and availability metrics have gone through a lot of rehauling and overhauling. Um, there have been six new sections specifically on healthcare related topics with respect to data as well as functionality. Uh, some of the scoring is now interactive, unlike the, the traditional CVSS. Based on how you answer question A, question B may come up or question C may pop up. So new options appear based on how you answer. And there are 31 new extended metrics. Each of these start with an X. Um, that can seem a lot, um, but actually they've made it simpler through um, these decision flow diagrams and extended vector diagrams. And what they are, um, if you look at one section, for example, privileges required, there are two, three new extended metrics here. Um, so you look at uh, the text in bold, it's XPRL, XPRZ, and XPRS. And uh, there are certain questions that you answer. These questions are more focused as compared to what the core CVS spec says. So these are more specific to healthcare and medical devices. And as you answer yes, no, or unknown, you get new options and then you land at the privileges required for the outcome for that particular case. Similarly, there is an extended vector table. This is another representation for the rubric where the questions are more uh, verbose and it also provides you the values and the element that are relevant, the extended vector element that are relevant. So you use this as the reference and then you answer these questions and that helps you generate the score. Uh, before we start with the case studies, I wanna talk about patient safety uh, because this has been customized for healthcare and medical devices any adverse effect on patient safety is flagged. So this, there is a, there's a flag where um, uh, it's called PIPS or short for potential impact to patient safety. The idea is that um, if a certain marker has come up for PIPS, then you may be required to do an internal safety oriented hazard analysis and report this to the FDA for, as part of your post-market post -market guidance. Um, this is one of the activities that's commonly associated with class two, class three medical devices. So this ties in nicely, where as part of the scoring mechanism, you're also providing that information to the FDA. Uh, the FDA also recommends that you perform these activities by consultation with a group of SMEs, including security professionals, device engineering professionals, healthcare experts, as well as IT integration and interoperability experts. So this reduces the likelihood of um, subjectivity. It gets more inputs from a broad range of experts in this space. All right, uh, I'm gonna hand over to Rahul here to talk about the online calculator for the rubric and also show you how to use it. Over to you, Rahul. Uh, let me just stop sharing. All right. Thank you, Sumant. Uh, just a moment, I'll share my screen. We can see your screen, so good. Hello everyone, this is uh, Rahul from DeParma. So from here, I'll uh, walk you through the DeParma's online calculator, which is also called as rubric calculator. And as you can see, these are the links where you can uh, find the calculator. So do visit these links and check out the calculator by yourself. 
So before I show you the uh, cal uh, rubrics calculator, uh, I will show you the CVSS calculator, which you all are familiar with. And then I'll show the uh, rubric calculator to compare the differences. So as you can see, uh, there are eight different metrics under this base course sections where each metrics have been defined uh, to select a particular option uh, in order to evaluate a particular security threat. So, but these options sometimes uh, limit the options uh, for uh, perfectly defining a particular vulnerability to be specific, the vulnerabilities which are affecting the uh, medical devices. So in order to evaluate those kinds of vulnerability, we should be uh, using rubrics calculator. So this is how the rubrics calculator is uh, used. And this is the web page where you can see the uh, rubrics calculator. So the rubric calculator uh, mainly concentrates on scoring medical devices uh, vulnerability. Uh, and as you can see under each uh, metrics, which offers you a structured questions where we need to answer all these uh, structured questions in order to evaluate a particular vulnerability in a better way. Sometimes what happens is uh, the user or the analyst uh, will not be sure about the answers to certain questions. So at that time, this rubric calculator will take the uh, worst case scenario and it is going to calculate the worst case vector value. And the interesting part is whenever we answer a particular question, so the rubrics calculator is going to skip some of the questions which are not relevant to the uh, vulnerability. So for example, for this field, if I select the option as yes, as you can see, these two questions have been skipped by the calculator because these two questions are not relevant for the previous questions. So once you answer all these uh, questions, uh, we will get the attack vector value uh, in this place. So in the next part, uh, the uh, metrics which comes under uh, this uh, basic metric group, uh, which are, I mean, with, uh, these uh, metrics are all similar to what we have previously seen in the uh, rubrics, I mean, uh, in the CVSS calculator. So as you can see, we can, uh, this is the attack complexity uh, metrics and the privilege required uh, metrics also has some of the structured questions here. And the user interaction and the scope metrics are also same uh, as the CVSS uh, calculator. So coming to the next part, uh, the rubric calculator mainly concentrates on the confidentiality, integrity, and availability factors uh, by mainly considering some of the healthcare aspects. Uh, as Sumanth explained previously, this CI impact will be uh, divided into six different sections where each section uh, specifies a particular healthcare aspect. So like once we uh, answer all these specific questions uh, under each section, so we are going to get a rubric CVSS score over here. So this was about the walkthrough of the uh, rubric calculator. So we'll get back to the slides uh, for the further. So now we'll see some of the case studies where we'll understand some of the vulnerabilities which are affecting the uh, medical device. And then we'll calculate uh, the CVSS score for the particular vulnerability using both uh, CVSS and the uh, rubric calculator. So in this vulnerability, uh, so in this case study, the vulnerability was discovered uh, on uh, market product, which is classified as to be as the class two medical device, where this medical device can be connected to a mobile application via Bluetooth. So the vulnerability here is whenever the medical device is unpaid, it is always discovered by the other Bluetooth devices. So what happens now is uh, it will open a door for an attacker where he can use his uh, malware application in order to connect to that particular medical device which will prevent the actual user uh, to connect uh, to the medical device and the attacker might cause some denial of service condition for the user. So as we know the vulnerability now, so we'll calculate the CVSS score for this uh, particular vulnerability. So for the attack vector uh, matrix, I am going to select the option as adjacent because the medical device which we are using in this case, uh, it, is, it uses a 
BLE protocol for the communication part, where uh, in order to exploit this particular vulnerability, it should be on the same protocol level. That means it cannot be exploited uh, remotely. So I'm going to select the option as adjacent. And for the attack complexity, I'm going to select as high because uh, the user, I mean, the attacker should perform some of the previous tasks, like you need to create a, a malware application. Uh, so, and uh, some of the other uh, tasks you should perform. So the attack complexity will be high here. And there is, I mean, uh, the attacker doesn't require, require any privilege accounts uh, in order to exploit this vulnerability. So I'm going to select kind for this option. And also uh, the attacker doesn't require the user interaction in order to exploit the vulnerability. So I'm going to select kind for this option as well. So for the scope field, I'm going to select the option as unchanged because the uh, exploited vulnerability doesn't affect any resources beyond the security scope. So that will be unchanged. And there is no loss in the confidential data. So again, this field also goes none. And again, uh, there is, uh, I mean, there is no effect in the data that the uh, device is going to be stored, that, that the medical device is going to be stored. So I'll select the option as none for this. For the availability if, uh, field, I'm going to select the option as low because once the exploit is done, uh, the availability of the data which the uh, device is stored it will be partial. So I'm going to select the option as low for this, for this case. So as you can see, we got the uh, CVSS score as 3.1. So we'll do the same for uh, uh, this vulnerability using uh, rubrics calculator as well. Just a moment. Okay. So for uh, this attack vector metrics, the first question is, is, uh, is asking that, can the attacker utilize some type of network or communication protocol to exploit this vulnerability? Uh, since uh, this uh, medical device is using BLE protocol for the communication part, uh, we are going to select yes for this option. And the next question is, it's asking uh, does uh, it use any uh, OSI specific uh, protocols like IP or like TCP or uh, UDP. So since only BLE protocols have been used, uh, we, are select, we are selecting the option as no here. So the next question is, uh, like, since the uh, communication part with the uh, medical device is taking place via Bluetooth, which is a wireless channel, so I'm going to select the option as yes here. So in, in order to exploit this particular vulnerability, uh, the attacker should be in the range approximately 10 feet or less around the uh, medical device. So I'm going to select the option as uh, yes for this. So we have answered all the questions for this particular uh, matrix and we got the uh, vector values local for now. So for the next uh, matrix that which comes under a uh, basic metric group, which are all similar to as what we have seen, uh, what we have defined in the vulnerability previously using uh, CVSS uh, calculator. So I'll select those default values for uh, this calculator as well. So the privilege required will be no. And the user interaction also is no. And this is same as the uh, CVSS calculator. So coming for the, for the next part, uh, since the medical device doesn't store any data that is related to PHI or PII data, and also the, device, uh, the medical device which we are using in this case doesn't store any data related to diagnosis. Also, it doesn't store any data related to uh, the delivery of therapy. And, and also uh, the device which we are using in this case doesn't store any data related to the clinical workflow. So I'm going to select the all the uh, options as none for this case. So we'll do the same for this section as well. And for this, so. so we have selected the options now. Uh, in the next section, this uh, section mainly concentrate on the functionality part of the medical device where uh, the uh, attacker will uh, 
block the functionality of that particular medical device. So based on this scenario, we'll answer these particular questions. So the functionality part cannot be read or exposed in this case. So we'll select none for this option. Again, the functionality of the device cannot be deleted. So we'll select none for this option. Since the attacker is going to block the functionality part of the medical device, so we are going to select the option as low for this case. Okay, uh, in the next section as well, uh, the medical device which we are using in this case doesn't store any sensitive data. So all the uh, questions under this section will select the option as none. So we have answered all the uh, questions. So you, as you can see here, we got the Rubik's CVS score as four and the severity level is medium. So let's get back to the uh, slides and uh, we'll compare the results now. So this is the screenshot for the CVSS calculator where uh, we have selected every option under each matrix. And as you can see, we got the CVSS score as 3.1 for this case. And this is the tabular form for all the questions that we have answered using rubric calculator. And this is a better way to analyze the answers that the user has uh, opted. As you can see in the below screenshot, uh, this is the comparison part for the CVSS score uh, where uh, this score is, uh, this is the score using, uh, we got the score using uh, CVSS calculator, and this is the score we got uh, using rubric calculator. So as you can see, the severity level here uh, deviates from uh, uh, low to medium, and also we can see some uh, major uh, deviation in the CVSS score part as well, which is from 3.1 to 4.0. Thanks, Rahul. So I think in the interest of time, we'll just jump to the conclusion. Um, if you can just hand over the screen back to me, please. Okay, okay. Right. Cool, thanks. So we saw one case study where the CVSS score actually changed. Right? So we were uh, the, using the CVSS um, the actual uh, 3.1 calculator, we saw that the score was uh, a low, but using the rubric for CVSS by answering some of those questions specifically, we saw that it jumped to a medium. Um, and note that the attack vector and the, um, the access vector in the attack complexity has changed. This is because uh, the attacker profile has not really changed, but by reading the rubric and analyzing those questions that the rubric specifically calls out for some of these sections, um, it was easier for us to actually uh, lower the access complexity from a high to low um, and the access vector from a local to, uh, from an adjacent to the local. Right? So uh, what helped in this case was that um, there are very explicit questions in the rubric that enabled us to um, answer these questions specifically and precisely and hence arrive at a score that is more justifiable compared to the, uh, the regular CVSS 3.1 calculator. Um, similarly, in the interest of time, we'll just breeze through this. There is another uh, case study where the score did not change much at all. It just came down from 7.9 to a 7.8. Uh, so what we're trying to say is that don't expect this to dramatically change the results, but there could be certain specific cases where the rubric can actually provide you with a more accurate framework for scoring medical devices vulnerabilities. Um, and lastly, uh, while this is showing a lot of promise, there are certain gaps and uh, more work to be done. Um, some of these studies have been done on very focused groups of medical devices. Um, so it may not apply to all kinds of medical devices. And uh, uh, this, this guidance is not suitable for pre-market submissions. This is not for evaluating risks and vulnerabilities in the architecture and design. This is more for device level vulnerabilities. And essentially the, the feedback and data is still relatively thin. This is, this is brand new in a way, uh, because these kind of programs take years to mature and, and eventually re, uh, reach that kind of uh, stability. So I think uh, to summarize, this is really promising. This can help the healthcare and medical environment uh, to a large degree. 
and um, and yeah, so so that's what we had for today. So if you have any questions, we're going to be hanging out in the work adventure 2D platform. Um, and if any I mean, anyone wants to talk to us about uh, medical device security and healthcare IoT security, happy to chat anytime.